Hello lovelies, I hope you're all doing well. Today I am going to share with you my watercolor tools and my watercolor process. As you guys know, I enjoy watercoloring and I am learning how to paint. I'm not too good at it right now, but I wanted to take you along with me. Inside this watercolor pencil tin, I have actual pans of watercolor and in the bottom of each pan i put this little magnet strip so that none of these pans will go flying around and a lot of these colors are from different collections from the gansai tambi line these are the swatches of how they look like on watercolor paper but part of the little collection of pans I have here are from this specific line. A friend of mine gave this to me for my birthday and I absolutely love these watercolors. They are my most used colors. The rest of these watercolors are, I guess they're the primary boxes, I'm not sure, but have all of these in the tin, except for this cadmium orange. I heard that it's kind of toxic, so I didn't add it and I don't really use bright colors anyway, so honestly, I could probably get rid of half of the colors in here. As for brushes go, I honestly only use these three brushes. They are from the Princeton Heritage line. I picked them up not really knowing <laughs> what to look for, but I went to Michael's and saw that they had this little collection of brushes and they had a bunch of watercolor flowers in the back of the packaging and I thought, okay, this is definitely gonna work. Um, they have the name Jenna Rainey, which I've been following some of her tutorials to kind of learn how to make these little flowers. These are round brushes. I have a number two and a number six and a flat brush for that water wash. As for paper, well, I have two types of paper. I have this notebook, which I'll go in depth later, but I bought this huge watercolor pad from Michaels. It was the cheapest one. And since I'm still on that practicing and learning how to even use the medium, I thought this would be perfect. I don't need anything fancy. This other one is a is something I thought would be like a little notebook, but it's actually pages that are glued on all the sides. And there's a little opening here that you can pull the sheets out. This is a nice alternative to taping your paper down, but I really wasn't looking for this. I thought it was an actual notebook. I wanted to keep track of my watercolor process. So I will have to find something else later on. When I first started with these specific watercolors, I used my Midori notebook and I actually liked how this watercolor looks on MD paper. This watercolor is kind of strange. It's not really good with layering, but I was starting to practice my flowers. You can see the progress of how wonky they are looking. I'm still learning though. I really enjoyed having everything in one little notebook, but I ran out of space. So I started using my letter writing pad, which is also MD paper. And here you can see all of the flowers I was practicing with. The one that I kind of like the most is the rose and the poppy flower uh, this one is kind of an ugly flower but it's all a learning process i'm still learning and figuring out how to even make blobs look like flowers okay so this is the part where i'm going to try to sort of explain how i do the flowers that i've been learning recently remember i'm not a pro and i figured i can make small little paintings to put along the wall of my desk. I have quite a bit of pieces that are faith related and 
I want to add more without actually buying them. So I figured I can use the flowers that I learned to try to make something decent and just fill my wall with scripture. For this first flower, it's going to be a little lavender flower. And here you can see that I am pointing my brush towards the direction of every little petal. And I'm basically just stamping the belly of the brush to create this little teardrop shape. And that's pretty much it. It's just stamping a bunch of these teardrop shapes to make it look like a little bundle of lavender. Here you'll see me switching the brush to the number two, which is a finer brush. And I use that to create these little long scraggly looking leaves. Now for this next flower, I actually forgot what it was called, um, but it's those little three petal flowers with a dark center to it. And I am really desperate to learn this flower. This is not my best flower, I'll admit it. But I do have fun trying to recreate this flower. And here you're going to see me just using that belly of the brush to create a sort of petal looking blob and I am just trying to play around with layering and blooming. This type of watercolor is not really good with layering. It's kind of like a single layer type of watercolor and I actually like that but you have to really keep in mind what you're trying to do. Um, here I'm just going through each brush. I primarily use the number six brush which is a little thicker than the number two and really utilizing pressure and the sides of my brush. It's kind of like when you're doing calligraphy how you press down on the thicker parts with your tombow marker it's very similar to that. I'm, again, still learning how to properly use these tools, but it's really fun to paint these flowers and try to make them look like their suggestive flower type. Now, here is where I should have probably stopped. I kept trying to add more details because I couldn't really see that flower and that's probably my fault. I didn't use a reference photo. I just went with whatever was in my mind so it probably looked okay but of course I had to keep going and keep trying to add more detail. But it's a good exercise to learn how to properly use this type of watercolor. For my next image, I am going to do the little roses. I really love the roses. I find them really easy. Again, they're not gonna look like realistic roses. I like the suggestion of these roses, but they're really fun to paint. So you start off with like a, I don't know, a squiggly six, I guess. And you really use the belly of the brush to create each petal and you're going to overlap each one. You don't want them to be the same side by side and it gets easier the bigger the petal. Right now I'm using like the tip of the brush to create these smaller petals, but you'll see you can mix colors and play around with each petal and playing around with these colors while they're still wet for roses they don't have to be perfect i like that they're a little bit squiggly to make it look more like petals and i feel like they're the most forgiving flower other than the lavender 
as you can see i am using a lot of the colors that i mentioned in that japanese watercolor palette i have no idea what their names are but i really love their muted tones they range from going almost black to a really soft color depending on how much water you use for my next little floral botanical i guess i'm going to do a little eucalyptus plant and this one is pretty much making round little petals and playing around with the pooling forgive me if i don't know the actual terms for watercolor again i'm still new at this and i'm just having fun but i really enjoy how you can really change the value of every color depending on how much water and where you place things too you can create a lot of shadow with just one layer on its own i can't remember if this is how it is with traditional watercolor but i know for these they behave so similarly to inks and i think that's why i like them so much i remember having a harder time with regular watercolors and here i'm just playing around and adding a few little tiny baby leaves and buds for the eucalyptus plant okay so this bottom flower it's kind of ugly it didn't turn out exactly how i planned because i had it in an awkward angle but i actually like how it turned out i just kept playing around with it and kind of turned it into like this little abstract flower and i'm going to be adding little quotes around here and i think for this one i'm just gonna put she did her best and god did the rest because that's kind of exactly what happened here it turned out pretty cool i think it's because of those pigment watercolors you can really see different shadings and depth to every color for each floral i'm going to add either a bible verse or some type of faith related quote and while i'm here i do want to bring up my channel i know there has been quite a different shift on the focus of my channel it's not anything so great and noticeable but i have been sharing more of my faith and i have been losing a lot of subscribers for it and i'm actually okay with that um from the very beginning, I've never been afraid to share my faith. And even in my about me section, I have, hi, my name is Paris. I film everyday lifestyle content surrounding my love for Jesus, Hobonichi Techos, Traveler's Notebooks, and everything stationary, and the occasional spiritual watercolor spread that is full of encouragement, which is exactly what I'm doing in this video. I continue on saying that I aspire to create a relaxing community where we can obsess over our love of stationery, encourage each other, learn from one another, and most importantly, glorify God, even in the mundane parts of our lives. That is something that I aim to do when I started my channel, and I am looking to pursue that further. This channel is not going to turn into a full-on Bible study channel. I do not have any credentials to do anything like that. But I will share how I, a normal person, incorporates her faith into her everyday things like journaling. <laughs> and if that's something you do enjoy, consider subscribing. I have gotten... Quite a bit of new followers even though i've lost a few i have gained double in what i've lost which is kind of cool and encouraging to see and i would like to continue creating more faith content anyways here you can see how i made the little eucalyptus 
painting a bit nicer and more frameable by adding some layers of textured paper. I think I'm gonna do the same with the others. I'm not sure because I don't know if I wanna add too much color onto my wall. I might make others that are just all green, but I think these are pretty cute and I'm sure I'll find a purpose for each one of these. I will say, I think my favorite is the rose. I really love that I am chosen. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy my little watercolor exploration and hope you guys enjoyed seeing what tools I use for this fun process. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.